Welcome to this podcast, Mission GJ. At this time, we have Apostol Erickson Salazar with us. This is good. This is good. We're here flowing with the prophetic for the house. That's right, Lewis says. And one of the biggest uh, riches that we have and we live daily is the prophetic. And more so because it helps us to be able to have a lifestyle, more independence with the Holy Spirit, and more to define our path in the kingdom. And really speaking of the prophetic and how it defines our path uh, in terms of the spiritual, that's uh, the monologue that was shared recently was very deep, which was non-binary. Well. <laughs> It was very deep that I I was in shock. I enter into a state of reflection, which I think was the purpose, and Apostle says that was the purpose. Lewis says, I was, I was left with my mouth open. Um, as far as how the monologue has defined and broken down and, and really explained the topic of, um, of our position, how the world is designing an agenda to be able to dislocate what it is, what it means to have an identity according to the kingdom. It's very deep. Apostle says, yeah, in reality, and like I was saying, the intention was that, to, to throw a topic um, and create a debate, even though the debate is already there. The debate is there as such. We're just trying to, as a ministry, talk about it a bit because the topic has different aspects, um, the human aspect from a social stance, social po po uh, political. There's also a spiritual part and those two aspects can conjugate, but they each refer to something different. But but it's all guided from evil. And that's what we wanted to this time to reflect. So that's why we were speaking about non-binary, um, where we were saying that it is part of what it is, the plan of the new world order, where they're coming with a new gender ideology, trying to implement a new gender, which is non-binary. And that gender... Uh, refers to those that don't ref don't identify with the assigned gender within their body. They don't accept to be men, male or female. They don't accept to be either. They have no gender. And Lewis says, and when we hear that, we're we are seeing that they're going against the Genesis. Apostle says it's not a matter of Genesis or not, but it's people that are in an emotional limbo because we have to work on it in sections. What are they guiding us to? Because it's, it's, a, it's a product of what men feels. It is a matter of legal right. It is a matter of democracy. So these are people that are in emotional limbo fighting with, with counter ideals without having any truth of what they want at the end. And when you look at that, you say, wow. But then you say, but they have their rights. And then you say, okay, so everyone can feel whatever they want to feel. And that's why this debate comes where they want to do what they want to do. Everybody fights to do what they want to do. But then when we come to break down the topic of non-binary, it's going to hit many interests in many people. And there are people that are bombarded by the social pressure with spiritual attacks because there is a social pressure from one side, but there's also a, a spiritual attack that takes advantage of people with ignorance that don't know that those influences and that emptiness that you feel, those forces take advantage of that to dislocate you. And then you enter into this insecurity where you don't know what you want. 
nos agarran a todos. They catch us with our guard down. <laughs> Nobody can escape the spiritual forces of evil that want to dislocate everyone. That's why we have to talk about this and talk about it clearly because we're seeing how people are legislating about the 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 social aspect and, and, and rights. But at the end, these are people that are attacked spiritually. But they show it as a need that they have to feel one way or another. But how do you tell that person, um, oh, some people say that's psychological. But at the end, as I was saying in another podcast, the psychological problems and all problems come with spiritual forces of evil that come influencing. But those are topics that have no legal baggage or or legal legal backup to support those arguments. So what happens? Those types of people at the end, as I was saying, they don't comprehend who they are, what they do, where they are, where they're going. They don't know what will be of them. And when you read <clears throat> all those arguments that they have, at the end you say, but, but that's happened to me. <laughs> Do you understand? Lack of identity, lack of orientation, lack of direction, lack of purpose, lack of future. And then you say, but I've lived through that. Yes, we all have lived through an emotional limbo at any point. And from that, many fall into that space where the democratic rights are saying, if you feel this, come, we're going to support you. That is why there are many young people that are deviating because they feel like, finally, I found somebody that understands me. My mother and father don't understand me, but they understand me. What do you feel? Uh, 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 I don't feel anything that they, that they say I should feel. <laughs> and that's when we say, okay, we got to take him. That's when they say we got to take him to a psychologist. <laughs> and the, the topic has many roots and connections that are interlaced with the spiritual aspect, as I was saying. That's why we put it on the table, because many see it as a topic that is isolated or... That it, or, or something that relates to a group of people that find themselves in that situation. Well, let me tell you, you have found yourself in those situations. You have found yourself in a, in a non-binary life where you haven't had decision of who you really are in the spiritual aspect and the prophetic aspect. And Lewis says, how many times, how often have our emotions guided our, our lives? And Apostle says, not how often, no, always they have tried to guide our lives. You move according to how you feel today. You understand? How do you feel today like this? Oh, I feel so bored. You see, you change your attitude, your behavior, according to the situation of your life. That is why it's important to have a good structure, a good foundation. And, and, and the life manual comes to give us the foundation and the spiritual rules that allow us to surpass those blocks that want to dislocate us in life. And in reality, that is where, where we need to start planting ourselves and, and, and asking ourselves, how do, I, how do I face this sort of attacks? And one of the things that has taken us to, to either go off route is to not seek the foundation that the life manual teaches us. That is where the deviation comes. Why do we get deviated? Why do we get dislocated? Because we want to do things independently to what was established. That is why. If we connect in, to the fundamentals, we will be able to face that dislocation of feelings that always makes us think, like, there's nothing more perverse than a person that thinks too much. Because thoughts, the thoughts are usually not founded on the word. They're nothing more than to seek an alternative to what the life manual is teaching me. That's what the thoughts are and the arguments. You leave a counseling session and, and, then, you, and then they ask you, okay, what are you, what are you thinking? <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking, yeah, but you already received the guideline. Yeah, but I'm just thinking. Thinking. But you know why we think, because we didn't like what we were told before. I remember when I used to counsel people, massive counseling, there were always people that, that didn't ask for counseling. And you would ask them, why aren't you seeking counseling if you needed it? 
And it was because they knew why they were going to be told. And that is the most dangerous thing. So you want somebody more non-binary than that? Because they're in, in this indecision where you even tell them the way and they say, is there no other alternative? Where the established is, well, when they see the established, just say, it cannot be that way. Because they don't feel like that's the way it should be, that that's, that should be the only way. Do you feel identified, Luis? <laughs> and Luis says, it's because you're describing me. And Apostle says, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. Just to be clear, I don't know anything else about your life. I'm not exposing you. <laughs> so we want to be independent people. We want to go about life without having any commitments or rules. We want to be free to feel feel. That is the battle that we're having, that we want to be free to feel. And that is where the battle begins as to where we, we start entering and becoming a person that wants to deviate from what was established in the purpose for God's children. So there is a purpose established. We want to deviate from that. And that is why everything has been established but it is against my feelings. And that is why we're bringing this conversation. At the end, the non-binary topic, is it's about people that don't have a clear and defined identity because they themselves don't want to take on what has been established. And they give themselves that freedom. That is why when we want to go against our nature that has been established in the life manual, that is where the existential emptiness comes from. That's why the Word comes to teach us what to do to avoid that existential emptiness, which is an alert that we're going against our nature. See how interesting. That is why it's so important that we take on the life manual where we will be able to know when, where, and how our handling should be integrally in the spiritually and the natural. See how interesting. The life manual will tell you when, where and how, it will tell you. And it will give you the why also, but you don't want that because it's my feeling, it's what I feel. My feeling is not that. And that is what has happened with all these ideologies. Everybody is going by what they feel. What, I, what I'm trying to say is that this is very personal and and even comes from a place of an emotional need of the person. But but now see how this is being taken to a matter of le legislation. Where now it's also being included within the new world order as the the gender ideology. See how something so simple, but everybody is now dancing around the topic, and there are very little that have argument about how to surpass that, because how do I argue something when I'm in the same position, when I'm struggling with the same thing? And it's something so, so delicate, but it, it sounds like a joke when, when, when people say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm non-binary, it, it could sound funny, even humorous, but it is dangerous as far as how it incorporates in society. And then Apostle says, but it's like I'm telling you, it has always existed. That has always existed. What's happening now is that in this in this new world order now, they want democracy for everybody, but that's always been uh, in, within the prophetic, where men at the end is going to enter into a, become out of control, where they're going to turn against God, because at the end, I'm going to tell you, everything at the end has to do with let's turn against God. Furthermore, there's something very deep. In Romans, we have, especially in chapter 1, 26 to 32, very clearly says, 
Because of this, God gave them over to shameful loss. God gave them over to shameful loss. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. The same way, the way that, that men turns against God. And it says, in the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. Women turn back. Men turn back. Men want to turn against God. Why? Because we want to do what we feel. So then you say, but that's always existed. Yes. It's because being out of control to and doing what I want to do has always existed. Now it wants to be legislated because they want to take out and out of the way what God says. To make it legal, but there's something more that it says in Romans, and then it says, far, but then it says, God turned them into a, a blocked mind, which says, do what you want. And we are living ourselves in a very non binary way because we don't want to take on our prophetic position. And we're dancing around, going back and forth, and, and hanging out with the world, all because you don't want to be the prophet that God wants wants you to be. There are many that are denying themselves to be what they need to be because they're confused, because their feelings tell them something else. And God already has been fighting with men to save men. At the end, they're still in their enslaved way where they become reproved, where they, where God now lets them go to be reproved, to be condemned. Do whatever you want. See how it is? And it says here, to do things that were not good for them, being full of injustice, fornication, perversity, evil, envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They're gossips, slanderers, got haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they do not only continue to do these things, but also approve of those who practice them. That is Romans 1, 26 to 32. It's very powerful. And this was coming to me with this whole thing, thing of non-binary, which is no more than... Mm -hmm. the manifestation of that reproved person where now they're being let go to do as they please, but that's also connected to the end times where the rebellion and obstinacy is it's manifesting itself and that is what accelerates and provokes the coming of Christ because there are many people that have lost their identity because they haven't submitted to the prophetic, to what God has established and you have to put your guard down because we cannot continue to go against the purpose. We cannot continue to move against the purpose of God. And there is a battle between us not wanting to take on our calling, when, what we have to do, and that is dangerous because the enemy is identifying that type of person to steal from them. There are people that you ask them, what are you doing? And they say nothing. And they think that because they're not doing anything, they're not doing anything. You are doing a lot. You know why? Because you're not doing. So you're doing harm. And there are people that are doing harm because they haven't been able to connect with what they are. Apostle, that part was for me, Lewis says. It, it was deep when I, when, when I was able to identify that when I don't do is when I do more harm. That was a big confrontation for me because I saw it reflected in my environment. My surrounding showed and reflected what I supposedly wasn't doing. And Apostle says, and that is where a non-binary person comes up in not taking on the role that corresponds to them and staying in the part, in the place where I don't know, I don't want anything, and I'm just not trying to take anything on from anywhere. And that is where we were saying that we have to think about the fact that there are many that haven't taken on their prophetic calling because they're walking around like non-binary people. How are they going around without any sort of identity, without any sort of purpose? 
without any sort of commitment. You don't have to pretend to have reached everything, to have reached it, to have made it. Meaning, we're not trying to say that I'm this way or another. No, we depend on the Holy Spirit. We talk a lot about depending on the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because we can't do it alone. Something interesting about why God sent Jesus Christ, it was because men couldn't save themselves on their own. Men fell into sin because of their independence. So he came for us to depend on him, for him to be able to take us out of that mark of sin that we were dragging, that brought death. And the deep thing about this is that human beings get so entertained with creation that at the end, they end up idolizing idolizing creation more than the creator. So this, those attitudes, the attitude of not doing anything, and at the end, not doing anything, constitutes yourself in doing the most harm because you didn't take on what you needed to, that is a non-binary person that doesn't take on any identity. Because at the end, they were in a limbo without knowing that what I am, what I'm not, what I feel, what I don't feel. Because many are waiting to feel. And what are you doing? No, I don't feel. Did somebody tell you that this was about feeling? This is about taking on, based on what he already said. So there are people that have, that the bus has left them, expecting and waiting to feel when they had a ministry that was designed for, to guide them to the purpose. There was a prophetic frame for that purpose to, con to start to construct itself in your life. But no, the rebellion in us. No, because I don't feel. No, I don't feel. Everybody says, I, I was told to do this, but I don't feel. It's not what you feel. So there are people that because they don't feel, because they don't like, because they don't feel, because I don't, it's not delightful to me. Because of that, because religion moves by feeling, but we don't handle ourselves by that. We handle ourselves by obeying based on a chain of command, and that's it. What does the life manual say? What does the ministry say? Let's connect to the word. For what? To, to free our spirit. But I don't connect to the word to free my spirit, but I want to feel good too. So how are you going to feel good if you don't have a prophetic connection? You're not feeling, you're not feeding your spirit, but your, your soul is up there full of entertainment. You're not filling it up with a, the with a spirit, but you want to have a good feeling. What feeling, what good feeling are you going to have if you don't feed your spirit? So a non-binary person is a person that doesn't have any sort of identity because they don't pick any side. I'm not a prophet and I'm not not a prophet. I'm not from the world and I'm not from the ministry. I'm not from anything. I'm here. What are you? Non-binary. Was that deep? I wanted to reflect it in every aspect, this topic, because... We, we have, in, in our ministry, there are many non-binary people that have to already decide who they are and say and, and decide that they're not the ones on their own that are going to guide themselves to the purpose of God. You have to allow the ministry to take you because your definition, it's not, it's not defined by you. You don't define yourself. He already defined you. He defined us. Who told you that you define yourself? If at the end he said men and women, but, in, but the purpose is the one that takes you because the Holy Spirit is the one that takes you to the truth. So we're fighting and we're in this debate, but those are influences of ideologies influences of religion of emotions we're still in the in that that way of thought where we're waiting for a voice that tells us rise up my child all those that connect to a ministry are already a part of a body therefore that ministry according to Ephesians 4:11 he constituted the ministry to edify God's children for the work of the ministry furthermore each person that is prepared within the ministry it's going to be plugged within the body for them to be to, to, to join forces with the rest of the of the body through the joints. So in reality, the topic of non-binary is very broad. So of course they're gonna people are always gonna take it from the perspective of the social political aspect that yeah we can debate on it and we we guide the ministry in regards to that those topics and where we have the legal right we talk about it but the new ideology is where 
they're establishing the rules that we are independent and we can and we can uh, say and feel in whichever way we want. And that attitude, believe it or not, is the attitude against against what the ministry fights in each member of the ministry. Depend on the spirit. Don't depend on yourself. Listen to the spirit. Don't listen to your emotions. The emotions are always going to tell you, go for it. Of course, because you have all your sensors activated. Do you think it's easy? You think you're going you're gonna to stop and, and listen to the Holy Spirit? You know it's going to tell you to stop? So, dependence is something that happens in within a discipline where you're, you're feeding yourself and you're awakening your spirit. At the end of it all, at the end of it all, the deep thing about this is that we're going to lose everything for one small thing. So we're going to lose everything for one small pleasure or, or for giving in to ourselves. And I was telling a group of uh, pastors this is so delicate that we're seeing how all the prophecies are fulfilling and being fulfilled. And sometimes I have to decompress with a, with smaller groups because I can't say everything that I want to say. Because you have this sense of urgency to tell people, wake up, wake up. Look, everything's coming true. And people are just like chilling and, and this, you know, the future and this dimension where you say, hello, I believe in all that, but... I believe in that connected to the chronogram, to the timeline and the dependence of the Holy Spirit. Like the life manual says, that when he comes, he can find me doing so. Doing what? Doing what corresponds to me. And when you see that you're t letting, letting what corresponds to you be taken away from you because of the creation, because of mammon, which is the God of wealth that has people enslaved, chasing after something where you're like, what are you chasing after? Because if, the more you chase, you don't even know what you're going to do with what you're chasing. Because you're not even satisfied with what you have. You're not going to be more satisfied with having more. If you don't enjoy having what you have now, you think you're going to enjoy having more? It's deep. But everything is it's, it's based on that lack of identity. An identity where at the end you made yourself independent and you took the route that you wanted. You see, what's different from that and all these ideologies that even though they're organizing themselves and being legislated within the, the new world order, because I repeat, it's a prophetic frame that it's going to happen. Nobody can stop that. It's not because it cannot be stopped. Because if in reality there's more arguments that go against than what they could establish, but at the end it doesn't ma it doesn't have anything to do with laws or or anything. It has to do with the fact that it's part of the times that the word teaches us in Matthew 24 about the the end times. And of course we we save people, we save lives so that they can escape, but it's also also an alert for us to run and be on the on first row and we realize that this this is for us to be alert this is for us to be alert i don't see this as a way of oh wow this is the world is over no in the contrary this i'm hoping that this awakens many because it's like, okay, wake up, run for your life, let's see how many we can help, because the world, this is not simply that this is going to be legislated. This is a matter of a globalization. It's a program. It's a, it's a whole organized program within this new world order. So I'm telling you that at the end of it all, many, because of their characteristics, are more, are getting ready to live within that new world order more than to prepare for Jesus coming. What you're showing is that you're not waiting for Christ. You're not expecting Christ. You're not waiting for Christ. What happens is that there are many that are non-binary emotionally that don't want to accept the Holy Spirit to guide them. And those that are in that in that condition do not wait for Christ because you're not coming with him. You're not going with him. You're abusing now. You're pushing it. 
So when all these manifestations and we see them, instead of being sad because of them, what we need to do is be alert and, 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 and say, let's, let's be more aggressive. Let's work more for the kingdom. Let's do it. Let's see what else we could do. Let's see how many we, in our family we could save, how many friends we could save, how many I can continue to connect and for the prophetic to continue to be awakening me. It's now how how many I can associate to, what I can associate to, because even what you connect to, what you're watching, is manipulated by the new world order. Music, sports, any industry, entertainment, completely, is guided by the new world order. It's to entertain us so that we don't see what's happening, so that, so that at this point already you could give your life, your soul, to the devil. Before you even die, you start losing your, your soul, but you're excited. That is why in everything, in everything you see that it, the gender ideology, now they're telling you they have to use this, you have to use that, and you have to show, because it's all part of it. And everybody entertained. You're not understanding that everything is already said, but those that like to be entertained, okay, continue to entertain yourself. What I want you to know is that God himself, as Roman said, he turned them into a reproved mind. All those that persist in living as they want, he himself or that person will find their own consequences. God does not want anybody to get lost. So condemnation does not come because God has condemned us, because I gave him, I turned my back to his purpose through the life manual. Thank you for tuning into our podcast. We will see you next time.